Hello, welcome back. In this video, I will provide an overview of vector borne diseases. I will also list examples of vectors and the diseases transmitted by them. In epidemiology, a disease vector is any living agent that carries and transmits an infectious pathogen to another living organism. The first major discovery of a disease vector came from Ronald Ross in 1897 who discovered the malaria pathogen when he dissected a mosquito. This image shows a red blood cell full of malaria pathogens. In order to be called a vector, the living organism has to acquire the disease pathogen from the reservoir that can be an animal or bird or an infected human and then carry the pathogen in its own body to transmit it to another susceptible host that can be a human or an animal. The vectors for human diseases are mostly arthropods that include mosquitoes, lice, fleas, flies, ticks and mites. Rarely mammals can also act as vectors. An example is rabies virus that is transmitted by the bite of mammal. You won't find many other examples of other species acting as disease vectors. Arthropods need blood meal to produce eggs and also to grow from one life stage to the next. They get this blood from biting animals and humans. If you look carefully at these arthropods, you can see that their bellies are filled with blood. Many animals act as disease reservoirs from where the arthropods acquire the infectious pathogen during the blood meal. When these arthropods bite a human, the infectious agent is transmitted to them. They can also transmit highly infectious organism from one human being to the other. The pathogens have learned to adapt in such a way that they do not manifest disease in their vectors and reservoirs, which are essential for their transmission but when they enter humans, they cause a disease. These arthropods are causing disease transmission and frequent outbreaks throughout the world, more commonly in the developing countries. These are examples of some of the deadly vector-borne diseases. It is therefore important to know more about these vectors so that we can avoid, control or eradicate them. Arthropods have different mechanisms for transmission of pathogen into humans. The mosquitoes secrete anticoagulants in their saliva during their bite. The pathogens reside in their salivary glands and when they take blood meal, they are directly deposited in the human blood through their mouth parts during the blood meal. This is a sand fly and it is a pool feeder. It chews a hole in the skin of the host and feeds from the blood collected in that hole. Sandfly is responsible for the transmission of leishmaniasis, also called Kalaza. Leishmania parasites are present in the saliva of sandflies and are left behind in the blood pool from where they enter the tissue and blood vessels of the humans. Ridovid bug defecates after the blood meal and pathogens are left behind in their excreta near the bite site. The pathogens enter through the site of bite when the patient scratches the bite mark. The pathogens may take various developmental pathways inside their vectors. Propagative transmission means that the vector is helping in propagation of the pathogen by allowing it to multiply inside its body. This is an example where plague bacillus enters and multiplies inside a flea. An infected flea can live up to one year and transmit infection to the susceptible hosts. Developmental transmission is where pathogens develop from one life stage to the other inside the vector. Examples include the development of microfilaria into infectious larvae inside the midgut of mosquitoes. The infectious larvae migrate to the head of the mosquito and are then injected into another human during the blood meal. There is however no multiplication of the infectious agent occurring inside the vector. Cyclopropagative transmission is a combination of propagation and developmental processes inside the vector. Example is malaria parasite development and propagation inside the mosquitoes. 
Mosquito acquires gametocytes during the blood meal. These gametocytes fuse to produce a zygote that develops further into an oocyst in the midgut of mosquito. This oocyst ruptures to produce around 3000 sporozoites which are infected and are injected by the mosquito back into the humans to cause the malaria infection. Another interesting pathway of transmission is where the pathogen is transmitted from the parent to the offspring by trans ovarian route and the vector is infectious right from its birth. Example of such vectors include ticks and mites that lay eggs that are infected. Now let us cover the important arthropods and diseases transmitted by them one by one. These are mites. These are the vectors for scrub typhus. Mites are very small and their larvae called jiggers are not easily visible to the naked eyes. The pathogen responsible for scrub typhus is Orincia shushugamushi which is present in the jiggers right from their birth acquired from their mothers by the trans ovarian root. The jigger needs a blood meal to develop into its adult form and humans are infected in this process when the jiggers bite them. The next vector is a tick. This is how a tick looks like. Most ticks have to pass through three life stages that is the larva, nymph and adult. They need a blood meal to transform from one life stage to the other. They may acquire the infection during one life stage and transmit it during the subsequent blood meal to another human. Ticks are found commonly in both pet as well as wild animals that can act as a reservoir of these infections. This slide shows some of the infections transmitted by the ticks. This picture shows a flea. Female fleas need blood to lay eggs and that is why they bite humans. Fleas have been historically notorious vectors for the transmission of plague in the past. Other than plague, fleas can transmit rickettsia typhi, also called murine typhus, that causes an illness similar to scrub typhus. Some fleas carry tapeworm larvae inside them and they can infect humans if the fleas are accidentally ingested by them. Transovarian transmission is also seen in fleas. This picture shows a phlebotomine sandfly. It is responsible for the transmission of a very important infection that is Leishmania. It can also transmit some other infections like Bartonellosis, Sandfly Fever and Papataki Fever. This is a picture of a lice. Humans can be infected by three types of lice that is head lice, body lice and pubic lice. The body lice are known to transmit some deadly infections like epidemic typhus. This infection was common among the troops that used to live in the barracks where lice infestation was common. This infection is thought to be the reason why Napoleon had to stall his military campaign into Russia. Lice can also transmit trench fever caused by Bartonella quintana and relapsing fever caused by Borrelia recurrentis. In addition to the biological transmission, where the infectious organism enters and undergoes development or propagation inside the vector, the infectious organism can be transmitted by the vectors by mechanical means. In mechanical transmission, the organism resides on the outer body parts of the vector. Example includes the houseflies that can mechanically transmit several infections that are given in this list. This picture shows a ridovid bug that is responsible for the transmission of trypanosomiasis or Chagas disease. This is a picture of Setsi fly that transmits African sleeping sickness or trypanosomiasis. Enophilus mosquito can be identified by the angle its body forms against the horizontal while sitting. It's responsible for the transmission of most dangerous form of malaria that is Plasmodium falciparum. It can also transmit filariasis and O nyong nyong fever. Another important mosquito genus is Aedes. It is also called the tiger mosquito because of black and white stripes on their body and legs. 
Aedes mosquito originated in tropics but is now found in all continents except Antarctica. It is the vector for dengue, chikungunya, West Nile virus, St. Louis encephalitis, dirofilaria emetis and yellow fever. It bites rapidly and escapes most attempts by people to swat it. Its blood meal is also often short with insufficient blood ingested for the development of their egg. This is why Aedes mosquito bite multiple hosts before laying eggs, making them particularly efficient at transmitting diseases. Another important genus of the mosquito is Culex. Culex mosquito is most widely distributed mosquito in the whole world. It is a vector for filariasis, Japanese encephalitis, St. Louis encephalitis and West Nile virus. Unlike Anopheles and Aedes, the Culex mosquitoes lay eggs in the stagnant polluted water which is found easily near human dwellings. Rapid urbanization has given good opportunities to these mosquitoes to establish themselves around human habitats. These are the most common mosquitoes found in urban settings. So this was a brief introduction and overview of vectors and vector-borne diseases. Hope you liked the video. Stay tuned for more such videos. Do subscribe the channel and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching.